we found Travis fairly quickly and I was so excited. I was a huge fan of Kubo and the Two Strings. I absolutely loved it. I thought, I just thought it was incredible. So I was thrilled and when I first met with him, we had a real meeting of the minds. I think we both really fell in love with the same thing about the story. I was always watching movies and I loved all of the characters I was seeing, but more often than not, they were guys. Um, it was, you know, a boy's coming of age story. It was a boy going on an adventure. And as a young girl, I wanted to see girls going on adventures. I didn't just want to see princesses. I was never really into princesses. Um, and I wanted to see a young female character who was weird and different and didn't fit into any of the typical boxes. She wasn't a cheerleader, she wasn't an athlete, she wasn't a nerd, she wasn't, she wasn't any one thing. The thing that I loved about Charlie and what Charlie's now become is that she's a bit of everything and that's what makes her feel like such an outsider. If she was just a nerd, she'd weirdly fit in more but it's that she's a bit of everything. She's a bit of a tomboy, but she's still a girl. She is an athlete, she used to do her diving, but she's just kind of got all of these different pieces and her dad was always the one who saw all of those pieces and could reconcile them and make her one whole. Um, and I like the idea that if you lose the person that understands you and can translate you, you kind of lose a sense of who you are and that she's struggling to accept all of the pieces of who she is and, and find herself again. when B comes along, it's almost like finding a puppy who, who needs her and needs looking after. She is kind of forced to open her heart to him. She kind of has closed her heart after the death of her dad and you can see it with her friends where she's kind of shut herself off a little bit. And B, because he's broken down and rusty and doesn't know what he's doing and can't speak, the fact that he needs her forces her to open her heart to him, forces her to take care of him and in taking care of him, she kind of heals herself. She's not your typical girl. Um, and that's what I loved about Haley is that she, she can play being a tomboy without being boyish. She's still very feminine and still very much a girl. And that's something that, that I think is important for girls to see. I think too often female characters are delineated into like tomboy and you know, girly girl. And she for me had something lovely about her because she's got this real mix of beauty and femininity and also like a real tough edge. Um, so I was thrilled. I was thrilled that they cast Haley. And as soon as we got John Cena, I realized that was gonna, completely gonna work. He's so funny, he's got such good comic timing, surprisingly, um, but also just has a real warmth and a likability, um, as well as obviously being unbelievably terrifying and tough. Um, so I think he, he straddles that line incredibly well, where he can, be, he can be both the good guy and the bad guy. Michael Bay in the last five films has created such a close bond between Optimus Prime and Bumblebee and the audiences. And that's really what this movie is feeding off of. Although it's a smaller standalone movie, it's built on that relationship that Michael Bay has created between the, you know, the cinema going public and Bumblebee. It's based on that love and it's kind of being born out of that. So even though it's a separate small prequel, it's very much feeding off of that and going on its own separate path.